I think it depends on the language that I'm doing. If I've got the option to join a class, I find it quite motivational to be with other learners because they're the ones that keep you in check. And you kind of, when you're with a group and you're with a teacher, sometimes they take you out of your comfort zone. Whereas when you study on your own, you can stay just within the materials that you feel happy and confident with. And you may not go into topics that maybe will help to actually improve your fluency and to get you talking about other things. And it might spark other topics of interest that otherwise, when you're studying on your own, you don't consider. So I like both. But if there is a course, that would be my preference, um, usually. Um, so speaking from day one is an interesting idea. Um, I try to say what I know as soon as I possibly can. Um, so, I mean, for example, if I just know a few pleasantries, then I'll, I'll, I'll use them. Like, hello, thank you, please, where's the toilet? That kind of thing, you know, when you go on your holidays. But, um, but I mean, you know, you can only say what you know, right? So, so yeah, I mean, it's it's speaking, but is it really speaking? It's just repeating what you're learning, right? So I'd say, yeah, I repeat what I learn as soon as I possibly can. Kind of a weird mix of a digital devil and a paper dinosaur. I do like the feel of a book in my hands and being able to turn the pages and just sort of take it offline. Screen time sometimes is a bit um, difficult and you know with your eyes and sort of you know getting old <laughs> or getting older your eyes suffer so it's a little bit tricky sometimes looking at a small screen um, especially when you're tired whereas a, a book I find just a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, that said, I've studied languages both ways, really. I've, I've used um, digital materials and I still use books and write with a pen and paper, would you imagine? I mean, it's almost insanity, isn't it? <laughs> Vocabulary is probably the thing that takes, I think, the longest to get used to and to learn. Um, I find that learning it in context helps. So when you're talking with other people about things that relate to vocabulary, you actually need. So I have been in the past one of those learners where I'll take a list of vocabulary and just learn it all, parrot fashion. A lot of it sticks if it's similar enough to other words I know or if it's meaningful to me for some other reason but the meaningfulness of vocabulary is really important so whether it's a list of vocabulary from a similar language that I already speak and it's therefore easy just to retain or whether it's in context and then I can remember it because of sort of input um, is something that's a constant and it keeps naturally repeating for me to stick that's kind of the best way I learn vocabulary I've I've tried like flashcard type things as well, and sometimes that helps, um, but I do need the um, Grammar is <laughs> good and bad. <laughs> so grammar is necessary. I mean, it's the skeleton on which the language uh, sort of hangs, really. Um, I think that you can't learn a language without learning grammar. Um, that said, um, just sticking to grammar and worrying about grammar nonstop is probably also the wrong way to go because um, like when you learn your native tongue, you make lots of mistakes, but you still get your point across. Um, you know, I, I know even educated speakers of English who will make grammatical mistakes in standard English, but it's, it doesn't impede the understanding of the language. It doesn't stop or hinder them from communicating their ideas necessarily. Um, and likewise with a foreign language, um, you can do the same thing. So if you're learning Russian and you get the cases wrong, more or less people understand what you're saying. Um, and they can always ask and, and check to make sure that you know, they've got the right end of the stick. And it's, uh, it's I, sort of th I think so. Therefore, I, I would always say if you're getting the, the tenses or the, the verb forms or whatever wrong, it takes time. Just be patient and it'll come. 
but yeah, it's important, but not the end of the world if you get it wrong. So I don't think I fit language learning into my life. I think language learning is my life. Um, basically, I built a career around my interest and uh, study of language. I've always incorporated it into the work that I do, and it's become a core or the core element of, of the work that I do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So my language knowledge and expertise are used uh, constantly. Um, I work as the language's director, the social element, which is a social media management agency. And in that role, I have to use my languages for putting teams together to work on projects uh, for our clients. So it it really is used in kind of assessing people. It's used in, in doing quality assurance. It's used in all sorts of ways, language. So I would say there's that. And then my private life as well. I have friends from all over the world, but also at home. Uh, my home language is Macedonian. Um, I speak to my daughter in English, French, Spanish and German. Um, so on a daily basis, I'm using five languages just at home. And then outside, I live in Skopje most of the year. And, um, and outside, we use Turkish, Albanian. And then um, we're very close to other countries as well. And I spend time in Bulgaria, so Bulgarian, Greek, um, Serbian. Uh, so it kind of is my life. It's almost strange to think you know how I fit them in when it comes to new languages though I would say that there is an active effort that's needed on 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 me and on any other learner of a language that you have to find a way to include it into your daily routine whether that's listening to a podcast listening to radio listening to the tv watching films uh, reading books or just speaking to people who know the language as well or even taking a course you have to make sure you can make time for it. Otherwise, if it's not a relevant thing in your life, it's easy to just let it slide. Okay, so like everyone, I make mistakes in languages. And um, so I remember in Germany when I was saying for a whole month, I want to go in the toilet instead of I want to go to the toilet. And um, the, the German where I was saying it was, ich will ins Klo. And then I'd been saying this for like a month. No one had corrected me. And then one day they started laughing and they said, was willst du schwimmen oder was? Do you want to go swimming or something? You know, <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? And that's when I realized and I kind of had one of those Oh, no, moments, because I've been saying it for a month. And I said to them, I've been saying this for a month. And now you choose to correct me when it's probably like ingrained in my, in my, in my language. But um, there have been many, many others, I imagine, as well. I can't think of them all at the moment, but that's the one that sticks out because um, it was when I was in Germany and I was au pairing for three young girls. And and so it was quite a, a funny moment for all the kids as well. So it sticks out more than most. So there have been quite a few highs for me um, in terms of language learning. So I think the ones that always stand out most are where I've got more out of a situation because I speak the language. So a couple of examples of that would be um, I, it was 11 p.m. at night in Chester. I was waiting for a bus to London and there was a lady waiting at the same bus stop no one else around it was you know really dark outside and um and quite miserable and the bus came and this lady was deaf and a bsl uh speaker or user of bsl and um and she couldn't speak english she couldn't sort of vocalize you know sort of oral english um so when the bus came she had these questions and she and um, I was able to use my limited BSL to to translate for her, and that was extremely rewarding because I was thinking, well, you know, it's it, when you've learned something like that and you can help somebody, this the, it just 
makes you feel <laughs> makes you give that gives that warm fuzzy feeling inside you know so there's that and then there are times where i've been um in a situation where i was walking around barcelona and just being able to interact with somebody like i was interacting with this lady uh, when i was walking around parquel and i could talk to her in catalan um about and ask her about her life and talk to her and it, it just felt like kind of an enrichment of the experience of being in a in a, in a new place you know and um i i always really relish those opportunities to, to to talk to people that had i not spoken the language i wouldn't have had the interaction um i mean on probably the the most uh, meaningful example of this for me is being able to talk to my wife's grandparents while they were still alive and to hear all of their stories in macedonian and to look at all the photos with them together and i think that was probably the most special of all of the experiences i've had um so i have a few for different reasons but probably the one that stands out to me is um nikki crane who's uh, a learner in her 70s and she still goes out and learns languages and goes off to sort of the country to to practice and just I find it really inspirational uh, to see her so i see her posts and i just love um you know reading about what she's been up to and 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 hearing about her progress in the language and her experiences and just think wow if i get to that age and and um, and i'm doing that i'd be extremely happy but there are probably a number of other people as well that that i i really like and i i feel inspired by that i think she's probably one of my favorites yeah never ever say i'm going to learn spanish french german set yourself a realistic goal so that you don't feel deflated and defeated um almost immediately <laughs> because learning an entire language is is a, is a huge thing it's like putting yourself before everest and and saying i'm just going to go to the top right now like as though it's something you're going to do in like one one step no first aim for base camp the very first base camp and then go from there but so set yourself realistic goals i think and targets and meet those first so you can look back and say okay now i can talk about myself now i can talk about the weather now i can talk about my family now i can talk about what i want to do now i can talk about what i did in the past now i can talk about whatever you want to do but set yourself these smaller goals reach them and you'll see that the language comes together and all of a sudden you are speaking the language and you are learning spanish german whatever else uh but definitely that because um that's the thing that i find most people end up giving up with their language learning because they set themselves up for a fall and they set themselves up for disappointment by giving by being too hard on themselves remember you're human remember you'll make mistakes remember you'll forget more than you know and remember that you need to do ba make baby steps in the language 